Hey book besties, welcome to my September reading wrap up. I am so excited to be sitting here and talking to you guys about the books that I read this month. I know it has been a hot minute since I've done a wrap up video. The last time would have been my June wrap up because I was away on holiday in July and then I was in such a big reading slump in August. But then I came back and I have five books right here to talk about or technically four and a half because when I'm filming this video, it is not the end of September yet. And I have a hundred pages left of one of the books, but I'm going to be including this one. I just don't know what I'm writing it at the moment because I haven't finished reading it. But yeah, I'm super excited to be showing you guys the books that I read. Some of these have been anticipated. I also had a one five star read this month, which means that I get to use my little embosser. I get to emboss the book for my stamp of approval because I'm going to be doing this for every book that I rate five stars. Anyways, without further ado, let's hop right into talking about the books that I read in September. Okay, first off, I'm going to start off with a book that I know for a fact you guys have seen on my TBR for years. And you better be proud of me because I finally read Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. The real motivation for this was because the movie came out last month and I was like, nope, I refuse to watch the movie before I read the book. So it forced me to read the book and I am so glad I did. And I'm so mad at myself for not reading this like way earlier on because I enjoyed it so much. The main reason that I wasn't really, I was very hesitant to pick this book up is because it is written in third perspective. And when it comes to contemporary romances, I prefer them to be in first perspective. Plus this is like just over 400 pages long and it does talk a lot about US politics and like I can barely understand Aussie politics. So I was like, I had no idea what I was getting myself into, but this really surprised me because I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. So this book follows Alex, who is the son of the president of the United States and Henry, who is the Prince of Wales. Alex and Henry do not like each other. And I think it was in chapter one, there's something that goes wrong and everyone pretty much knows that they don't like each other. So now just because they're in the, well, both in the public eye, they're forced to become friends. So this is a enemies to fake friends to friends to lovers, which was so, so interesting and so fun. And the banter between Alex and Henry was everything. I was literally laughing out loud at some of the things they would say to each other and their little bickering. They were like, a legit old married couple and I loved it. It was so funny. And this book also does incorporate emails between the two and they were technically also doing long distance because Alex is in the US and Henry is in the UK. So there's a little bit of a long distance situation going on, but it wasn't super long distance because they could easily just get on a private plane and visit each other anyway. But also it is a forbidden romance because they're obviously not supposed to be together, especially since they're both in the public eye. But all I want to say is that I really, really enjoyed this book. It was just a book that I wish that I read sooner when like it was first hyped up on Book Talk. but I'm so glad that I did finally give this a go. I still need to watch the movie, but I'm super excited to watch it. This book I did end up rating 3.75 stars. It wasn't quite there for four stars. I do think it could have been cut down a little bit to be a little bit shorter. Then I read Ramon and Julieta by Alana Quintana Albertson. This is a Romeo and Juliet reimagining, retelling situation and I was really interested to pick this one up because I do love retellings and stuff but this one was a bit of a disappointing read. The only thing that I really liked about this book was the book cover. Like it's so pretty. Honestly, there are so many other Romeo and Juliet retellings out there and I think others are so much better than this one. I did like the incorporation of food, specifically like the tacos that they were talking about. I was craving tacos the entire time I was reading this book, but I did not see the chemistry between these two characters. The characters also really, really annoyed me. They frustrated me like majority of the time in the story and it was just very boring and slow, really hard to get into. The spice was super cringy and overall, I think there are just so many other better Romeo and Juliet retellings out there So I would personally not really recommend this book because it just wasn't my cup of tea I was so close to DNFing it at some points, but it's like less than 300 pages. So I pushed through Yeah, unfortunately this one was a miss which was quite disappointing because I was really looking forward to reading this But I rated this one two stars Then we have my five star read of the month, which I'm so so excited to be talking about right now and this 
this one is also being turned into a movie. I don't know exactly when it comes out. I think it, it's meant to come out in December is what I've heard, but I've also heard it comes out in November, so I'm not sure. That is One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. In my opinion, Taylor Jenkins Reid books can never go wrong because I've read three of her books now, I think, and I've loved every single one of them. The way that she writes is just unlike any other authors that I've read. Her romance books are so much more than a romance book, and I love 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 that this one was obviously no exception absolutely devoured this this one was also a five star book prediction and it was obviously indeed five stars i binged this in one sitting i was obsessed i was tearing up while reading this book at some points and it takes me a lot to tear up or cry in a book so that is really saying something but if you don't know this book actually has a love triangle trope and i don't like love triangle but the way that this book does it is done so so well we follow this girl named emma she marries her high school sweetheart named jesse and they're just living their best life but on their one year anniversary jesse goes on a helicopter but then the helicopter crashes and they can't find him so they just presume that he's dead and then we follow emma as she's grieving and the way that taylor jenkins reed wrote about grief in this book was done so so well you literally felt like you were emma in this book which was just incredible honestly i just love the way that they depicted grief throughout her years of healing and also then moving on and then finding love again and like how much she missed him like i think that was just written so so well and so beautifully written so obviously her husband dies and then you follow her through as she's grieving and healing and moving on and just trying to figure out who she is as a person and then she meets sam who actually was one of her childhood friends and they end up reconnecting and they end up falling in love and now this has been like after three and a half years of jesse passing away and she's finally feels ready to be putting herself out there and being in a relationship again and they are now engaged then she gets a phone call from jesse and turns out he's been alive this entire time he's been stuck on this island and now he's coming home and now you're stuck as emma trying to figure out what she wants to do this was literally her love of her life her true love that she had before she thought that he passed away and now she's got this new love and she's a completely different person now and you follow her as she navigates what she wants to do who she wants to be with also who she is as a person now and the way that this was written both jesse and sam were both such good guys that you couldn't really pick which one but obviously i was so happy with the way it ended because i think the decision that she made for herself was just the perfect decision i don't know it was one of the only tri love triangle tropes in this book that did not make me cringe because the way it was written was just so so beautiful i could talk about this book for literally forever because it was just amazing i love 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 taylor jenkins read this is definitely my favorite book of 2023 so far and my favorite tjr book obviously i just love this book so much let's give it the stamp of approval i'm so excited oh my god it's also my first time embossing a book because i haven't found a five star read since like may which is crazy and then the last two books that i have to talk about um are part of a duet which is the i think it's just called the six crimson cranes duology I don't think it really has a name to the series or duet, but I reread Six Crimson Cranes. This was my first reread of 2023, which is so fun. I read this book back in September of 2022 and I really, really enjoyed it. And then the second book came out in late 2022 and I really wanted to read The Dragon's Promise, which is the second book, but I couldn't remember what the first book was about. So I decided to reread Six Crimson Cranes this month. I enjoyed it just as much as I did the first time I read the book. This book gives me a lot of like cinderella meets swan lake vibes so we follow the princess of kiata named shiori she is about to actually have an arranged marriage with this guy that she's like not wanting to marry and then she also finds out that she has magic running through her veins but in this land of kiata magic is completely forbidden so she's not allowed to actually have any magic but no one knows that she actually has magic running through her vein and then her stepmother finds out and then she basically puts a curse on her where she has a bowl on her face so no one can recognize who she is and she also can't speak or make any noises because if she does one of her brothers will die and her six brothers also get turned into cranes as well so she's kind of you follow her and her brothers as they try to figure out a way to break this spell and come back home and there's also this cute little paper bird that comes to life named kiki who's definitely my favorite character who shiori basically 
brings to life through her magic. It's very whimsical and magical and sweet and there's also a real, little bit of a romance subplot that goes into this as well and there is also a dragon in this as well and it was just a very cozy fantasy book. I am definitely more of a contemporary romance girly but if you are wanting to step your toes, dip your toes into fantasy, I think the Six Crimson Cranes duology is a great place to start because it's not too heavy, there's not super crazy world building, it's very easy to understand, super easy to go through and there's only two books in this series anyway. This one was a reread and I rated this one four stars. Now this one, I'm actually not finished with this book yet. I've still got a hundred pages left so I've got like this much left to go. So I'm almost finished and I know that I'm going to finish this before September ends. So I just wanted to mention this book in here anyway. So this is the second book that follows from Six Crimson Cranes. I'm not going to say what this book is about because it literally picks up straight off from where Six Crimson Cranes ended. But this is called The Dragon's Promise. The book cover is absolutely stunning. Both of these covers are literally so pretty, especially next to each other. But this one is like my favorite cover. I obviously can't comment too much about this book because I haven't finished it yet, but I am enjoying it. It did take me a while to get into this story, especially considering with this one, I flew through it and it was just like I, I binged it. But with this one, it took me a while to get into it. The first 150 pages felt very slow for me and I struggled. But then it started getting a little bit better. But then there were parts where I was just not not enjoying it as much as I thought I would, especially with how much I enjoyed the first book. So at the moment, within the 300 page mark, there's still a lot that's going on and I'm still waiting for a plot twist to hit. I don't know, at the moment I'd probably say it's sitting at like a 3.5, but I could see this probably being a four star by the end of the book, just depending on how it ends and what the plot twist is and what kind of happens. But I will say, I was expecting this book to be a little bit more, I don't know, I was expecting it to give a little bit more is probably what I'm trying to say. I, especially with how the first book ended, but I am still really enjoying it. It's just, it's just been taking me a while to get into it. And every time I stop reading the book, I, it, it, I find it hard to pick it up again. Four stars and probably either 3.5 or four. I will include my final rating in this video like i'll have it popped up right here but you can also find the reviews of all of these books that i'm mentioning on my goodreads so go follow me on my goodreads link down below but yeah that is actually all the books that i read in the month of september if you guys want to see what books are on my october tbr i have already got that video posted so go check that out i'll have it linked down below and if you guys did enjoy watching this video please give this video a huge thumbs up let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of the books that i just mentioned let me know what your thoughts are and subscribe to my channel down below i post new videos every single week and i will see you all in my next video bye